I was born 1926. In the Hebrew calendar it was Kav Gimel Tevet. I was like the youngest boy. I had two brothers and a sister. The name of my father was Abraham Yitzhak. He was a, a tradesman. I mean, uh, he made pots, pens, milk cans, water pails. He, he made his thing, everything was made. There was no factory like this. You go on the store and you buy things. In the summertime, the rich people in the villages they put on buildings, so they put on a roof, pumped in. And I used to go to help my father. He used to go to the vacation time from the school. While he was working, he was singing to himself songs. Oh, Abraham knew, Abraham knew, Stare Jatku Nash, Proste Boha, Proste Boha, Sabini Chludu Nash. Avram Avinu, Avram Avinu, our old, old grandfather, pray to God, pray to God for our poor people. He should, or oh, he should redeem us, or he should send back to our holy land. At Purim, there's a saying, the Jews used to go around and collect money. We were not rich, we were poor people too, but there was more poorer people than us. And I gave it a few, I had a few slots. Somebody gave five groschen, two groschen, whatever. Don't forget, a dollar was five slots. For one dollar, you could make a, a meal for the whole family for Shabbat. My mother, like on a Thursday, she used to get up 4 o'clock in the morning to bake hollis and bread. We made the bread for two, for two weeks. It like to make noodles for Shabbos, lakshi. Shabbos, we used to go to put, everybody make cholent. We used to put a piece of kishke in there. And then we used to go to the baker to put it down. And after shul, we, they used to send me to go pick up the cholent. Sometimes they made a mistake to <laughs> took somebody else's cholent. It wasn't even a good, a real good cholent in there. <laughs> We used to go to school. Everything was mandatory from seven years old. A half a day to school, and then we came back. We went to Haiti. We learned uh, Ivory, Chumash. I learned already Rashi. Every Monday was market day, and the going from the villages used to bring over Eggs, butter, cheeses, you know. The anti-Semitism was so great. They say, don't buy by ne kupi ujira bo benje bida.
I remember when the Germans got in Rosh Hashanah, they gave permission that Jews allowed to pray in the synagogue. Then I remember in Sukkot they gave an order. All the Jews had to leave this town and go to the Russian side. In 27 kilometers from us was the river Shan. There was the border. We were ready to leave the town too. My father, I remember, we packed up all of what we could on the wagon, what we had with the two wheels. But then it got quiet. We remained in the town. There was, every town had a Judenrat, a Jewish committee. The Germans used to come to Gestapo. We need 50 people for work, 100 people for work. So that's why it was my father's turn to go to work for the Germans, like on the road, cleaning, whatever. So I always took his place. So he should still remain to work, to earn a living. We had to eat because well, my father worked for the, the Gentiles over there, like making pails for milk in the to grind potatoes. They used to pay him with potatoes, with weed. We always had food. I remember I even gave away food. I stole food I put under my shirt and gave to very poor people, friends of mine, which they did not have anything. Every day was different laws. The Jews had to wear from 12 years old, wear the mug and dip it, the arm bent. I remember once I had blue eyes. I had once hair, blonde hair. A German officer passes by and he tells me, Schade, schade, the bist ein Jude. What a sin that I was born Jewish. In 1942, the whole town was surrounded with Ukrainian the Gestapo and the SS. We all had to assemble in the middle of the town. In front over there, 80 people were put on the side. I was among the 80 people who remained. I was working building roads. The rest of them, they were marching. They took him to the train station, which was six kilometers away. They were sent, we found out after the war, after the war we found out where they, what happened to them, where they were shipped, we did not know. They were shipped to Bell Jets. They sent us to the ghetto Reich, Zeshuv. So me and a friend, in a Jewish policeman, in partnership, we went to buildings. We were not allowed to go in. He was watching us. And we ripped out some wood, whatever we could. We sold it to the bakery. And we got some bread. For that, he was a partner with us. I had typhus. 
I did not see a doctor, I did not see anyone. I came out of it. From over there, they sent us to a camp, a working camp, push school. Over there, I was working building roads. But then we were also working for the Germans, doing all kind of, all kind of things. And that was a very good work. I was very strong, muscular, not like I am now. And uh, I was left, yes. They gave us food not to starve, but we were always hungry. Then the Russians got close. They shipped us to Auschwitz. We go there three days, we went, we went to Auschwitz. Three days without food, without water. I remember in, near Krakow, they open up the wagon and they, they throw in a few uh, buckets of water. And I pushed myself to get a little water and I got hit from the couple over there, you know. We got to Auschwitz, we did not have a selection. Because the commandant from our previous camp went with us to Auschwitz. He gave us, I brought a transport to all skilled laborers, which was true, because I was already a carpenter, we were shoemakers. So we did not have a selection. It was in that time, 1944, when every day a transport of 10,000 Jews came from Hungary, most of them went straight to the gas chambers. So over there we got the numbers in Birkenau. That's my number, A1797. And they put us in the quarantine. Then they took us away to Shemjanovice. This was the name of the working factory over there. From over there, the Russians got close. They sent us to Matthausen. We went to Gusen. From over there, they sent us to Hanover. Hanover is a very big city. There was a very big factory by the name of Hanomark. Over there, we were working. I was working in a late machine. We were making artillery against the airplanes. We had day shift, night shifts. So we were marching every day, even though the whole factory was bombed out. But we still had to march in to go into work every day. This was in Hanover. They were bombing day and night. From over there, we got assembled. We're gonna leave, we're gonna leave this camp. We were marching three days to Bergen Belsen. We passed by one village, one uh, farm. There was a, a, a wagon with two wheels. So the Germans, they took it. We were slapping it. They put their knapsacks and they, they shouldn't have to carry it. So there was one guy, Moshe Zilberman. He opened up a knapsack. He stole some piece of bread. He was caught, so he was taken out to be shot. He was begging for his life in German. I remember word by word. Bitte, lassen Sie mich leben. The Krieg is ja schon zu Ende. Please let me live. The war is almost over. It didn't help. He was shot.
From far away we saw mountains. We got over there to a bodies, dead bodies, mountains of mountains of dead bodies, mountains. When we got the bag in Belgium, they put it in a barrack, 1,200 people in a barrack. In the morning, they opened up the barracks, and our job was to drag the dead bodies and throw them in the pits. They locked us up at night time. There was no bunks. There was one bunk for the couple. Underneath the bed, I saw a pot of soup. There was a pot over there. I find, managed to steal the pot of soup, and I'm eating the soup. Next to me was laying a friend of mine. His name was Moshe Epstein. And my, a friend of mine, we went to school together, went to Haver together. So he asked me in Yiddish, we all spoke Yiddish, Moshe, Moshe, give me a little soup. I did not give it to him. In the morning, he was laying dead. If I would give him the soup, he would still be dead for the typhus. Listen, I did not give him the soup. He was laying dead. Tell me where can I go? There's no place I can see. Where to go, where to go? Every door is closed for me. Now I know where to go, where my folk proudly stand. Let me go, let me go. To the precious promised land. No more left, no more right. Lift your hands and see the light. I am proud, can't you see? For the less I am free, no more wandering for me.